I think blockchain in energy has three major applications. We can speak about um, applications in transactions and smart contracts, uh, decentralized buying and selling of electricity, which was our dream, which we made it possible so that the uh, consumer can buy, can buy and sell electricity directly with the producer. More than that, he can actually transfer that electricity to another consumer and that electricity gets physically delivered. delivered. So that's one application and I think it's the most important one. Uh, we can also speak about uh, applications in uh, documentation of ownership. And I'm speaking here about uh, renewable energy certificates, CO2 certificates and uh, asset management. And the uh, third big category revolves around the distributed ledger applications and mainly metering on the blockchain and invoicing electricity and heat on the blockchain. People lost, lost their faith and trust in centralized institutions. Mm -hmm. So centralized institutions need to provide more visibility, more transparency. And that can create trust again. And uh, this is why blockchain is important because it, it can create a bridge of trust between uh, institutions, between businesses and consumers. And uh, consumers want that. Uh, think about the fact that in a few years, uh, the millennial generations will uh, overtake uh, economical power mm. from the older generation. And the millennial generation is used to technology. Mm -hmm. They uh, adopt technology very fast. And uh, they embrace the concept of, uh, of uh, freedom, of peer-to-peer. Uh, and uh, of transparency. Transparency is very important. Of I green. Think, mm -hmm. Right? Of green also, green uh, economy. Green. Exactly. Yes. And uh, there's another trend, a very important trend. Uh, lately, uh, we, we are using more resources than ever to generate the same amount of energy. Yeah. And I'm speaking about the entire value chain. Mm -hmm. If we continue in this pace, path, pace and path, we will reach a point where we spend more energy and resources than what comes out. And this has to change. We have to move to a circular economy, to a sharing economy. We have to stop wasting resources. Mm -hmm. And we have to think uh, in an integrative way mm -hmm. so that we can, we can protect our planet. We, can, uh, we no longer flood our atmosphere with uh, CO2 emissions. Mm -hmm. uh, I think anybody today walking around the street, uh, around traffic, around cars, breathing heavily, <laughs> can attest to that. <laughs> so, and, but you need, to, you need to think in an integrative way, because this is not a simple solution. You have many systems interacting. So you have to take each system, put it inside a global system, and think and, and place it where it can provide more value. And uh, blockchain, blockchain can do that because uh, it allows transparency from process to process for all the parties involved. I, yesterday, Sami was telling me about a brilliant, brilliant uh, Japanese manufacturing technique, which basically made, made uh, Toyota one of the biggest uh, auto manufacturer in the world, which revolves around uh, colored ca cartoons, mm -hmm. colored cards, that are used in uh, factories to, to speak about the, the supply. So uh, there were three colors, right? Yes, inventory and supplies. S somehow, somehow, that's very similar to blockchain. And look what it did to manufacturing. Yes. Right? <laughs> Transformed everything. Okay, let's change a little bit the perspective and uh, to see what are the expectations uh, of the Romanian energy producer. What could be the first step for a successful and smooth adoption of the blockchain in Romania uh, for, from one big producer like uh, OMV, for example? Yeah, well, uh, that's a very good question and a very big question at the same time. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to give at least part of the answer. Uh, if, if I'll start with the, with the second part of the question which should be the first steps. I think, I think it is very important that uh, we build trust in the technology uh, so that the consumer, uh, they, they trust and, uh, and then they have courage to, to adopt this, uh, this technology. That, that, that's why I think one way to start will be with, with some applications which are 
for example, uh, proven and easy to understand and also can be, can be taken by the early adopters, like for example, electric mobility. Mm -hmm. That's one of the examples which come into my mind. You know, people, they have electric cars, mm -hmm. uh, maybe blockchain technology can help feed the electric cars with the, with the energy they need. So that's, that's one, one aspect of it. Second, uh, we, we talk about energy markets, energy business. This is a usually highly regulated sector. So uh, I, I think one of the first steps has to also uh, involve the, the, the regulator, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, looking at what efforts are, are being done at the level of the, of the European Union, mm -hmm. and then also integrating the Romanian uh, energy market into it. So uh, a clear set of regulation which allow innovation to continue, mm -hmm. I think this is, this is one, of the, uh, one of the prerequisites uh, for, for this technology to succeed. Now, I'll move to the first part of the question. Uh, I said clear set of regulations and so on. Uh, we're a large energy supplier. I mean, we, we have a 8, 860 megawatt uh, installed capacity gas fire power plant. We supply around 50 terawatt uh, uh, of gas per year to our customers. We supply to industrial customers. So uh, I, I think whatever is being done uh, it, al it also has, that's, that's our expectation as a producer, it also has to include this relation uh, between large energy suppliers and their, and their customers. Uh, customers, today they are supplied by us, uh, by other suppliers, producers, but uh, soon they will perhaps install uh, solar panels on their factories and so yeah. on, and yeah. they will also become producers. So, uh, we have to find a way, and I think here that this technology can help to integrate their production with mm -hmm. also their energy needs uh, uh, mm -hmm. from, uh, from, uh, from the market. Uh, being, uh, we have, as I said, we are a large power generator, uh, gas-fired power plant. At the same time, there are other technologies around. Yes, solar plays a very important role. Uh, in Romania, wind as well. We have an important hydro generation base in the country. So one aspect which we would like uh, to see some progress with the help of blockchain will be the virtual power plants. Mm -hmm. I think that's, yes. that's something which we are very interested of and we will, uh, we will be looking into it and we, uh, if we see an opportunity then I think we, w we won't hesitate to, to, also, to also step in. Or we can create together the, the opportunity going to Andre. <laughs> uh, yeah, dialogue with the regulators is, is important, but I, I think also we, we have to come with solutions yeah. to the regulator because yes. the, the, mm -hmm. uh, the regulator is there, mm -hmm. they, are, they are listening, the dialogue is good, mm -hmm. but uh, solutions are needed and I think solutions must come from the industry, if I, if I, may, if I may say so. Uh, also, uh, and maybe I'll, 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 I'll stop here. I, if you look at today's system, uh, there are a lot of tiers and it's, it's, it's a rather complicated system. You have producers, you have TSOs, you have DSOs, and then you have consumers and so on. If we could bring a simplification and uh, uh, how to say... Like categories. I, I think some, someone said uh, mm -hmm. uh, eliminating the middlemen, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, to, to make the link as direct and as simple as possible between consumer and, and producers. That's also okay. something which we're very interested in.